and Energy Sustainability to Order. Today is December 18th, 2012. It's 11.03. And we are in the Council Chambers in Kailua, Kona. Uh, would everyone please turn off cell phones, pagers, and other mobile communication devices on silent mode? Communication devices on silent mode. Um, would um, any other, any other co, co or any, co or any turn off your turn microphones? Okay. Um, I'd like to first introduce the members of the committee present. To my left is Council Member Eligon, Council Member Kern. Council Member Kanuha and Council Member Eoff. To my far right is Council Member Onishi, Council Member Yoshimoto, Council Member Poindexter, and Council Member Ford. I'd like to first call for statements from the public on the items on the agenda. Um, in Hilo, do you have any testifiers? Madam Chair, we have one testifier, uh, Richard Haas. Okay, great. And in Pahoha, in Pahoa, do we have any testifiers? Yes, Madam Chair, we have four testifiers today on your committee. Okay, thank, you. thank you. And in Waimea? Good morning, Madam Chair. We have three testifiers. Okay. Thank you. And in Co, do we have any testifiers? No testifiers, Chair Willie, this time in Co. And here and in Kona? Here in Kona? Seeing none. Um, okay, I'd like to start with Pahoa, and so we'll take your first two testifiers. Um, and if you would like to proceed. Good morning. Uh, yes, I'd like to first introduce Soma Grissmeyer, um, commenting on resolution number 1913 in support of it, uh, representing the Good Shepherd Foundation, as well as Mr. Sidney Rothinger, representing himself on the same resolution in support of it as well. So if, uh, Soma, if you'd like to please join us here. Okay, Good just morning. to remind you, you have three minutes right, to testify. We'll that. <laughs> okay. Um, good morning. Uh, we just read, Margaret, thank you, your resolution this morning, and we were so excited about it that we made a special trip in to say that we support this and wish it all the best, and it's a wonderful policy for the future of this island, and thank you for introducing it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Sonia. And now, uh, Mr. Sidney Rothinger. Aloha. It's uh, very nice to uh, see this resolution. I'd like to commend you, uh, Councilwoman Willie, for this. And I'm really very happy that you're on the council and that uh, you're bringing your wisdom to, um, to the council's efforts to protect our environment, our lifestyle. And I think you very well articulated how this policy in, in this resolution does reflect uh, state and constitutional policy and county policy uh, all the way down. And I, I really commend you for putting that together and making a very clear, coherent statement. And I hope that this just flies through the county council with uh, complete unanimity. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sydney. And you have two more there in Pahoa. Why don't we go ahead with them? Okay. Um, the next gentleman will be Dr. Avery Freed, representing himself, would like to, dis to discuss uh, Resolution 1913 in support. Thank you. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Avery Freed, and uh, I want to say I strongly, very strongly support this resolution, and thank you. Uh, Margaret Willey for presenting this. This is uh, very much needed and puts us on a wonderful track to have 
an environment which is clean and to also have sources of energy which are uh, non-destructive. So again, I give my full support to this and thank you so much for presenting this. Thank you, sir. And finally, we have Mr. Robert Patrici discussing the same resolution in support, uh, representing the Puna Puna Alliance. Hello, Council. Hello, uh, Bob Robert. I, I want to also thank you, Margaret, for, for putting this resolution forward. Uh, we we're very, very happy to see this. I circulated it and got all, a lot of positive feedback um, from the community on this. So. Um, Everybody was just really happy with this. I did get one comment, and uh, it's pretty minor. On the third page, I was asked to, to mention that um, it says, be it further resolved that the burden of proof that proposed mitigation measures are sufficient to protect the long-term health of. Uh, I was asked to just mention you may want to put residents, long-term health of residents in there. I did see that you have of those impacted and residents may limit it, so I, I, you know, I just wanted to mention it to you because I said that I would. Uh, other than that, I just couldn't be more happy. Um, we're really glad to have you on the council. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And that is all of our testifiers at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, uh -huh. And Hilo, do you have a testifier there? Yes, Madam Chair, we have a Mr. Richard Ha, and then followed by Carrie Marks. Thank you. Aloha, Rick. Aloha, Chair uh, Willie and um, Council members. I am uh, very grateful for the opportunity to share my thoughts, and I, I support this resolution. <clears throat> I must point out that I am very optimistic for the Big Island with this uh, Council. Um, it's about all of us and not just a few of us, yeah? Um, we farm 600 feet um, simple. Richard, could you put the mic a little closer to your... Okay, how's Does... this? Is this better? And and if you would start over, just so we hear you clearly, okay. and state who, who you are. I am very grateful for the opportunity to share my thoughts. Uh, and I'm very optimistic for the Big Island with this new council. Yeah, uh, it is about all of us, not just a few of us. We farmed 600 fee simple acres at Pepe Ikeo. Uh, we started with two acres more than 30 years ago with a $300 limit credit card, treating chicken manure for banana pula pula. What I learned all these years is that food security involves farmers farming. And if farmers make money, farmers will farm. Um, agriculture has to do with sustainability. Um, food, yeah. Because oil costs quadrupled in the last 10 years, I set out to learn about oil so we could position our farm business for the future. I just came back from my fifth peak oil conference a couple of weeks ago. It was held at the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, these are the main takeaways. The world is using twice as much oil as it has been finding for the last 30 years. The natural decline rate of all oil fields is around 5% per year, which means we need to make, we need to find the equivalent of uh, Saudi Arabia every three years or so. Uh, since 2005, oil production has been flat in spite of record oil prices. Something is happening. And regarding natural gas, 70% of the production of the average gas well comes out in the first year. We need to replace 30% of our gas wells every year just to stay even. Um, if oil hits $200 per barrel, our tourism industry will be devastated and everything else depending on it. Uh, a new study by researchers at the International Monetary Fund is very sobering. They've got five different scenarios, and none of them are good. If oil supply starts to decline, even at a 1% rate, in 20 years, that's 20%. Just 
you, if you start to think about it, what happens if it's 3%? The, the IMF report says they, they cannot model that because it's just, well, you can imagine. So this is potentially very serious. We need to adopt the better safe than sorry principle because we're sitting out here in the middle of the Pacific. And I'm no doom and gloomer. You know, we've, we've, we started farming a long time ago and it's always been not no can, can. Um, but we do have knowledgeable people here on the Big Island. Robert Rapier um, works for Michael Saulfeld as Chief Technology Officer at America International. He moved to uh, Waimea several years ago and he was a lead speaker on the second day of the PICOL conference. Uh, I would suggest uh, maybe have him give a presentation. He, he's really good at uh, explaining things in, in, in easy to understand ways. Uh, and Richard, Jenny, could you summarize? Could you summarize? Yeah. We do have your written and we will be reading that. Oh, okay. So, but go ahead and summarize. Yeah, okay. So basically, <laughs> We, we are in, in, in serious uh, streets, you know, and I think that we need to get as much information as possible to, to make the kind of assessments we need to make, but it's certainly not business as usual. And um, uh, the best thing to do is get as much information as possible and then make good decisions from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other testifiers there in Hilo? Yes, Madam Chair, our next testifier is Carrie Mark. Okay. Aloha. Um, good morning, everybody. I would like to... Aloha. Oh, I'm Carrie Marks, for the record. Um, nice to meet you all via the internet. I'm looking at the monitor, that's why I'm not looking at you. I just want to say good morning and welcome to all of you six new freshmen. We're excited and happy to see you. And very, very happy that um, Ms. Willie has put the sustainability resolution up. Mahalo, big mahalo to you. Thank you very much for this. It's about time. I agree with what Mr. Haas said. We are in dire straits and status quo must change. We cannot continue down this path anymore. We have to start <coughs> thinking about the next step. We have to make, ish make plans and um, can consider what's going to happen after those plans. So big mahalo. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all over there. Um, it's very quiet here. It's still cold in this room. You didn't miss anything. Aloha. Thank you very much, Gary. Okay, Waimea. Good morning, Madam Chair. I now have four testifiers. Uh, the first I'd like to introduce is Fran Tabor in support of Resolution 1913. Thank you. Thank Good you, morning, Fran. Madam Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and the Council. I'm in full support of what Hilo and Pahoa have said. Um, they have said it eloquently and very effectively. I support uh, resolution number 1913, 100% with no changes. I am very, very happy to see this resolution and hope that it will be adopted. And then we can move forward and try in every possible way to preserve our environment and to become self-sustained in agriculture, energy, and other ways as well. So I thank you, Margaret, for putting this together. I think it's excellently done and look forward to its implementation in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Fran. Your next, next testifier, testifier, Donna. Our next testifier is Scott Cahill in support of Resolution 1913, and he represents himself. Yes, hello, my name is Scott Cahill. And I uh, just want to speak specifically about a kind of sustainability that is, I, I think it's root sustainability that most communities uh, oversee or, or don't understand, and that's to have a currency that would be independent of the dollar. And I don't mean in place of the dollar, but I mean supplemental. Uh, we're, right now, we are all very much connected to the dollar. 
and uh, the dollar is an international currency. It appears to be national, but in fact, the, the American dollar is, is the international root currency. So what, hap what it means is that we're very subject to the winds and tides of economics because we have to use this. But it's perfectly legal to create your own as a supplement to this. And I, I have uh, recently moved here from California, where I spent 30 years, and I'm, I'm a national expert on the subject. And I've, st I've started three currencies myself, and I'm, I'm just here to offer the advice to the council that uh, self-sufficiency is a wonderful idea, community self-sufficiency, but the root of it is really to have some economic self-sufficiency so that we're not subject to all the things that the dollar by its nature is subject to. And I'm willing to uh, give whatever I can to help it, if the council would like to proceed with this idea of, of co community local currency. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, I'm sure you're giving Donnie your uh, information to be available if there are questions. Um, and Donnie, do you have another testifier there? I sure do. The next one is Jessica Andrews. She's in support of Resolution 1913, and she's representing Keiki of District 9. Thank you, Jessica. Aloha, my, Aloha. my name is Jessica Andrews. I, I would like to share what I think about genetically modifying organisms and sustainability. GMOs are not uh, Could you put the microphone a little closer to her, Johnny, please? Okay, and start over, Jessica. My name is Jessica Andrews. I would like to share what I think about genetically modified organisms and sustainability. GMOs are not sustainable. When you vote on resolution, you are voting not only on your future, but my generation and generations after mine. Please protect Hawaii's resources for the future. I am counting on you. So are the rest of the Keiki of Hawaii. Thank you very much, Jessica Andrews. Our next testifier is Lisa Andrews on support of Resolution 1913, and she represents North Kahala, District 9. Aloha, County Council, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Uh, on behalf of 1913, um, I am definitely in support, and uh, I'm so grateful for Margaret and her uh, abilities joining in the uh, county council and being able to put together something like this for us. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that you will pass it today. And uh, um, sustainability is um, definitely... Uh, a uh, very important uh, issue right now um, with these funny times, <laughs> the economy and all. Um, certainly GMOs um, and uh, energy, water, thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, please, please, please support this resolution. Thank you. That completes our testifiers for Waimea. Uh, thank you very much. And um, we have anybody else here? Ko, do you have any testifiers there? Or did we have we covered everyone? Is there anyone out there that other than okay. here at Kona? Kona? Okay. Chair Willie, this ahead. is Kaupu's site. We don't have any testifiers. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. May I have a? Uh, we now move on to referrals, Madam Deputy Clerk. Uh, Madam, you... Madam Chair. Oh, yes. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, but we have two more testifiers that came in during the testimony. Okay. I'm happy to hear them. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, we have uh, Mr. Tom Travis discussing Resolution 1913 in support, representing himself, followed by Barbara Cuttins, uh, representing herself and her husband, also in support of the same resolution. I'm Tom Travis. I'm here to, to uh, uh, testify in support of Resolution 1913. Since before Hawaii became a state, commercial interests have been working to exploit the land and people of Hawaii for their benefit. Now a partnership exists between commercial interests and our government to undermine the legal protections for the Aina and the communities of Hawaii, all to reduce roadblocks to exploitation. Recently, the state of Hawaii saw unprecedented attacks on the power of local communities in all islands. Act 55 established the Public Land Development Corporation. Act 97 did away with geothermal subzones and took away the county's power to regulate geothermal power. Senate Resolution 25 clearly stated the need to use new state powers to commercially exploit the land. In response to this assault, grassroots organizations throughout Hawaii have sprung up. Local groups are standing up against Big Wind in Molokai and Lanai, resorts on Oahu and Kauai, fencing of hunting areas and the slaughtering of game animals on the Big Island, as well as geothermal plants and hydrogen plants, fields of GMO crops throughout the islands and the inner island power cable. All of these groups have one thing in common, the strong desire to protect our homes, families, and land from changes that do little to favor anyone except the power brokers. I support this resolution, particularly the provisions that state that government entities should favor caution and preservation, that the burden of proof of the adequacy of resource should fall upon that, that the person, the entity that wants to use the resource and that regardless of the importance of conservation and preservation efforts, the governing entity must be accountable to private parties. In the end, the council should jealously guard the county's privilege to control land use and the culture and social values of our people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Travis. And Mrs. Barbara Cuttons. Good morning, um, Councillors and um, Council Chair. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to come and testify regarding this important resolution. Um, can you put the microphone a little closer? It. It's a little hard. Can you hear me now? Thank you. Yes, Thank you. excellent. Thank you. I'm here to testify on behalf of my husband, Trace Perot, and myself in support of Resolution 1913. Margaret, I thank you for proposing this resolution, uh, 1913, and supporting sustainability on our island uh, resources. It's wonderful that you are wanting to ensure the sustainability of energy on the Big Island, the Sunshine State. We, we live off grid and all of our electricity comes from solar. We believe this resolution supports the installation of solar um, and we strongly support that. We also um, really like that um, the burden of proof will fall on um, those wanting to exploit resources and we are um, particularly interested in ensuring that the public continue to have their say on issues like this. And I support the last uh, speaker, um, Tom Travis, and what he was saying about um, Act 55, Act 97, and Resolution 25. And um, we thank you very much for bringing this uh, resolution today. Thank you, Barbara. Is yeah. Is there anyone else that would like to testify on the agenda? Hearing none, um, we now move on to referrals. Madam Deputy Clerk. 
Communication 25, Resolution 19-13, a resolution to ensure the advancement of principles of sustainability and county government decisions affecting natural and cultural resources. From Council Member Margaret Willey, dated December 4, 2012, transmitting the above resolution, which resolves that all county level government decisions be consistent with specific sustainability principles and policies as listed. May I now have a motion to close file on communication 25 and recommend adoption of resolution 19-13. So moved. Uh, okay, moved by Councilwoman Ford and seconded by Councilwoman Poindexter. Uh, at this time, I would uh, like to relinquish the chair to my vice chair, Valerie Poindexter. Um, I am uh, submitting this bill, uh, this legislation, and therefore am turning. Let the record show that I am relinquishing the chair. Let the record show that I am assuming the chair. Uh, Margaret, would you like to begin the discussion? Thank you very much. Um, I, I want to mention first that this is a resolution. Uh, not as an ordinance. Um, and at this point, that was purposeful as a broad statement of policy, not as a uh, definitive enforceable law, but in a way starting a discussion and helping us all uh, brainstorm on what I consider to be an overarching important principle. Um, I guess Richard Ha uh, spoke, we've, and others, we have very challenging times ahead. And in my opinion, it, it's helpful to try to, to think long-term based on deliberate policies or, and not just reacting on a case-by-case -case basis. And here we're dealing with the principle of sustainability in that concept and how do we as a uh, government decision-making body, how, how do we apply that? Um, time isn't on our side. We no longer have the luxury of putting off hard decisions that affect our resources. Uh, for example, do we simply sell off our public lands to pay higher and higher oil prices? Do we acquiesce to whatever short-term economics dictate is the optimal economic strategy? Do we allow the highest bidder to skirt our island's environmental and cultural standards and policies? Um, I think what I'm saying is I don't think so. Um, there's no question that we need to move ahead boldly. I totally agree with Richard Ha. I, I suggest that we perhaps we could bring that speaker ahead. Uh, we are moving towards a cliff in terms of oil and energy resources. But what, at the same time, what I want to ensure is that our approach is true to our values, to our heritage, and our stewardship responsibility to the INA and future generations. And for this reason, I submitted Resolution 1913. Um, I want to stress that my goal here is resilience that we move forward towards resilience in terms of long-term economic, socio-cultural, and environmental well-being um, as a triple bottom line. Um, and I would hope that we are all in agreement. And this is not about taking sides. It's about encouraging adult conversation, problem solving together. And I would, um, and just in terms of that concept of triple bottom line, that really came out of the state's 2050 sustainability, that let's look in terms of not just short-term economics, but long-term economic value, long-term cultural value, and long-term environmental, and how can we have those three interlocking circles come together, and that should be our goal. Thank you very much. Um, Council Member Zendo Kern. Thank you, Chair. Well, um, sustainability, I think it's getting very popular. Um, I think it's important. I think it's one of the most important things we have going for ourselves, or we need to really move in that direction. Um, 
Now it's near and dear to my heart. So this though is is challenging. I know it's just a, a res excuse me a resolution. Um, my feeling is whether we're putting forth the resolution or, the, or, or an ordinance or anything else, it is the way it's supposed to be. It's as good as it can be. Um, it's there's some challenging um, language in here. I think vagueness and ambiguity does not serve us. Um, it just leads to more potential lawsuits. And I know that you're aware of that as, as an attorney. Um, so I, anytime we have vague or ambu ambiguous language, it's a, uh, it's a challenge for me. Um, you know, part of sustainability is not just to stop or suppress or say everything has to stay the way that it is. Sustainability is also about promoting. It's about doing things smart. It's about balance. Because well, I, I have an acronym that I use. It's C, sustainability. C stands for social. E stands for environmental. And the other E stands for economic. All of those have to work together. I would like to see a resolution that does promote sustainability and makes it our goal and our priority, but I would like to work on some of this language so it's not as vague, it's not as ambiguous, it's clear, it's definable, it's achievable. If we can do that, we can actually move forward united. So I have, um, personally, I'd like to take some time to work on some amendments. I'd like to see this uh, continued or postponed to the following meeting so we can actually get some more language, more more thought on this. Uh, I see where you're going with it. I like it, I just can't support it in its form right now. Thank you. Did you want to make a motion to postpone? Oh, oh. I'll make a motion after. I just want to hear more discussion okay. before I before I make yeah, a motion. Okay. Any other further discussion then, <coughs> Brenda Ford? <clears throat> okay. I I am generally in favor of this. I do agree. There's some vague areas in here, and I'd like to go through some of the areas um, <clears throat> in this resolution that I think we're maybe overlooking. In the third whereas, we talk about public trust assets, including land, water, air, mineral, energy. <clears throat> water is a vague term right now because it doesn't say whether it's potable, agricultural, brackish, or marine water. And I think we need all three, I mean all four, but I think we need to be very explicit about that. We don't mention ocean resources, and while ocean resources are controlled mostly by the state, anything that happens on our land is going down hill and we'll wind up in the ocean. And we've seen the results of that in Kohala, where we've got a huge coral bed that's been destroyed by the silt coming off the land. So I think we need to include ocean resources as well in this. <clears throat> Even though we may not have total control over the ocean as far as jurisdiction, um, we have a tremendous impact on our ocean. So that's something I would like to see. Um, in the one, two, three, four, five, fifth, whereas we talk about um, sustainability in the revised statute 226-108, I believe you should actually quote this section so that anybody, including the public, gets to see what it really says. Um, I think that's really important. And um, in the next section, the long paragraph, you get down on the right-hand side of the paragraph, about two-thirds of the way down, you see Wahipana, sacred sites. I think for those who don't speak Hawaiian, it would be important to put sacred sites in parentheses there and let everybody know what we're talking about. On page two, second whereas, you talk about the precautionary principle. It needs to be quoted so that people understand what the precautionary principle is. Um, then in, I already talked about the public trust principle. I don't think I did. Anyway, in the fourth whereas, down in the middle of towards the bottom, it talks about the public trust principle, and that needs to be defined so that we know what we're talking about. <clears throat> um, In the first be it resolved is in section two. Um, the advancement of social cultural values, customs, and sense of place is very important. But I think the second phrase, second phrase in that sentence, including sufficient places available for nature-related recreational pursuits, should either be its own standalone um, um, item because it doesn't make sense to attach it to me um, in number two. It needs to either be removed or be placed as a, its own standalone issue. Um, 
The other, another thing we keep talking about, it says in number three, the advancement of the ecosystem, the environmental well-being of our island and coastal waters. We're leaving out riparian, which are the river system. Now, granted, we only have one real river on here. It's very small, very short, but we need to discuss uh, riparian issues because even though we only have one surface river on this island, we have thousands of underwater rivers that are just spewing fresh water into the ocean. And things we do on top of those, those underground rivers will have a drastic impact, not only on the ocean, but our potable water sources. So I think we need to discuss riparian. And then on page three, the first, be it further resolved, this is, I wanna talk about something. You're, you refer to long-term health of the environment, of the culture, and of those impacted, residents impacted. <clears throat> On the mainland, um, the, the native, a lot of the Native American tribes have a philosophy that's totally ingrained in their culture. And that, that, that is, when you make a decision, make it for seven generations. I think the Hawaiians may have something similar to that, but I'm not an expert, so I can't swear to it. And that is something that we have never um, legislated We've never incorporated, we have this vague term, long-term. We never define what long-term is. I think it is time that we actually set out what our goal is. Um, is it 100 years or is it 500 years or is it something in between? Frankly, most of our decisions are based on two-year cycles of the county council, sometimes four-year terms of a particular mayor and no offense to anybody, previous, future, or current in either one of those categories. But we've never defined what we mean. So, you know, we pass something and it's good for two years, except when somebody decides that it isn't good for two years, and then that they, they make a change. I think it's really important that we define that. One of the things I did was, um, I did a really fast calculation. Seven generations at 25 years per generation is 175 years. Seven generations at 30 years is 210 years. If we were making sustainability decisions based on something between 175 and 200 years, now we're talking sustainability. Seven generations of our descendants um, would be impacted by the decisions. That's a lot different than making a two-year decision. Even when we build, I realize that a lot of buildings in the United States, and I'm talking the mainland in particular, um, don't last 200 years. They're 50 years, and they're, unless they've really been well maintained, they're shot. If you travel around the world, though, you will see cultures, ancient cultures, that built in such a way, most of it was in stone, but that's, that still exists. You can see cathedrals that have, are a thousand years old. You can see all kinds of things that have been built for the future. Uh, it seems to me that when we do these things that we need to start looking long term as not a very short-sighted two or four years and we need to start looking at um, our bigger projects as something that we want it to last and we need to maintain it to last for the 200 year cycle. So I would like to see something about that um, <clears throat> and I guess that's it for right now. So I, I will, I'm not going to say anything right now as far as let Zeno take care of it. But I also would like to see this postponed, and I'd like to see some of these things incorporated. Um, and um, we need to start looking much longer term than we have. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Council Member Zendo Khan, did you, or who's, did you want to speak, Karen? Okay, Karen, yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, I do, I do generally support where Ms. Willie is going in this resolution, and I do support the concepts as it builds on a series of, I think, landmark Supreme Court decisions coming out of our um, county, actually, over the last maybe 10, 15 years, and also the charter amendment that we, we recently included into our charter to also protect cultural and natural resources. Um, I have a question regarding um, number three in the be it further resolved the number three on the last page which states that 
regardless of the importance of conservation and preservation efforts, the governing entity must be accountable to private parties for any significant loss in value of privately owned resources. I'm wondering if that conflicts with something that I do remember from the Supreme Court decision in Passion Pelago at Kohana Iki, that determining that the protection of the Ancaline ponds and the cultural practices and that resource needed to be protected and it did not constitute a takings of private property and there was no compensation to the landowner for having to protect that resource. So my question is whether this statement conflicts with that decision. Madam Chair, can I answer that question? Okay. It does take it a step further. And in other words, that there could be compensation or some kind of accountability to that private use where, in my view, where something is needed or essential for the common good and we're placing the burden on a private party that one should give consideration to being accountable to be compensating that private party. So it is a balancing. And I hear what you say in terms of the Ancaline ponds and it does, I mean, I purposefully made this somewhat vague to sort of encourage thoughts and looking at different ideas. But yes, it brings in that idea, perhaps not to the point of a taking where one then, it then becomes state property, but in recognition that where something is good for the group or the population at large, that one does not disregard private property interests. Yes, it is a balancing. I know that. Thank you. Any other further discussion? Council Member Kern, you want to make a motion? Yes. Sure. Okay. Can we have Margaret will you speak? I will yield. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me just say, I appreciate the comments. And in light of discussion, I would be happy to have a motion to postpone. I'd like it to be appreciated if it was postponed to the call of the chair, but wouldn't necessarily be till the next meeting. Okay. Council Member Margaret Willie has moved to postpone. Oh, no, not yet. You're not moving. Oh, okay. Okay. She was requesting that motion be made. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that a communication 25 resolution 19 dash three be postponed to the call of the chair. Okay. So Council Member Zendo Kern has moved to postpone resolution 19 dash 13 to the call of the chair and seconded by Council Member Brenda Ford. Any discussion? Being that there is no further discussion, Madam Deputy Clerk, will you call the vote? Thank you. Ms. Eyal? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Iligan? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Chair Willie? Aye. Vice Chair Poindexter? Aye. Thank you. Vice Chair, we have nine ayes. Resolution 19 dash 13 will be postponed. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. It has been moved by Council Member Zendo Kern and seconded by Council Member Brenda Ford. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you. I was trying to look at her skip and follow her skip. I have my, I wrote my, I wrote mine for mine and I did have to pick up hers. Okay.